grace of God calls us to awaken in him. How will he find us when he comes? Awake and ready. And when he asks us to dedicate ourselves ever more perfectly to him, how will he find us? Awake and ready. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father Divine Mother, Divine Mother friend, beloved God, friend, beloved God, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ Babaji Krishna, Babaji Krishna Lahiri, Mahashaya, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Beloved Master, Master Paramahansa Yogananda, Yogananda, we have gathered together this morning. We have gathered together this morning. To call on your presence, to call on your presence, to come and be with us, to come and be with us, lift our spirits, lift our spirits, open our hearts to thy joy, open our hearts to thy joy. We are your children, we are your children, we love you, we love you. Om. Om. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We'll have some music. <coughs> So we'd like to call upon everyone this morning to join us in this song. It's called the Give Me a Light to Light My Way. The words are simple. Give me a light to light my way. Uh, truth is a light, so wise men say. And the choir will uh, sing it once together in unison, and then they're going to split off into parts. So we're going to do it as a round. So this part of the choir will start Give Me a Light to Light My Way, and you will all sing along with them. Once we start the round, we'll sing it through one time first, just the choir. And then when this, this, this section's turn to sing, you'll kind of follow these guys over here. And I'll kind of try to wave my hands and direct people. <laughs> 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 Our first chant this morning is I Awaken Thy Light on page 17.
are invited to go to Sunday school now. Our next chant is What Lightning Flash. Oh. It's on page 20, uh, 26. What lightning flash glimmers in thy face, Mother? What lightning flash glimmers in thy face? For a very brief meditation, sitting upright, relaxing the body, closing the eyes, taking a few deep, full breaths, and just resting for a minute in our hearts, just feeling God's light and God's presence. It's a beautiful light in our hearts. Just expanding that light, how it fills our whole body, and lifting our consciousness very gently to the point between the eyebrows. Just meditate in silence now for a few minutes, calling out to God in the language of your own hearts.
And in, inwardly focus now. Listen to the words from the Affirmations for Self-Healing by J. Donald Walter, Swami Kriyananda. For the spiritual quality for this week, non-attachment. Nothing is ours. No one belongs to us. Mentally, we should make a bonfire of our love for God and cast into it all attachments, all desires, all hopes and disappointments. It helps mentally to examine one's heart every evening and liberate it anew of all desires. Pluck out from your heart any burrs of new attachments that you find clinging there. Cast them joyfully into the fire of devotion. Pray to God energetically. I destroy all my attachments. They are no longer mine, Lord. I am free in thee. And our affirmation together, first loudly, and then taking it more and more within until we go into silence with it. Nothing on earth can hold me. Nothing on earth can hold me. My soul like a weightless balloon. My soul like a weightless balloon. Soars upward through skies of eternal freedom. Soars upward through skies of eternal freedom. Nothing on earth can hold me. Nothing on earth can hold me. My soul like a weightless balloon. My soul like a weightless balloon. Soars upward through skies of eternal freedom. Soars upward through skies of eternal freedom. Nothing on earth can hold me. Nothing on earth can hold me. My soul like a weightless balloon. My soul like a weightless balloon. Soars upward through skies of eternal freedom. Soars upward through skies of eternal freedom. Now deeply in silence within. Nothing on earth can hold me. My soul like a weightless balloon. Soars upward through skies of eternal freedom. And our prayer. I destroy all my attachments. They are no longer mine, Lord. I am free in thee. Om peace. Amen. I have our reading this morning. Today's reading is from Rays of the One Light, weekly commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita by Swami Kriyananda. This week's reading, The Redeeming Light. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. The book of Isaiah in the Bible, chapter 9, tells us, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death Upon them hath light shined. What is this light of which so many scriptures speak? In Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, we read of an early experience the master had with that light. I was blessed about the age of eight with a wonderful healing through the photograph of Lahiri Mahashaya. This experience gave intensification to my divine love. While at our family estate in Ikapur, Bengal, I was stricken with Asiatic cholera. My life was despaired of. The doctors could do nothing. At my bedside, mother frantically motioned me to look at Lahiri Mahashaya's picture on the wall above my head. Bow to him mentally. She knew I was too feeble even to lift my hands in salutation. If you really show your devotion and inwardly kneel before him, your life will be spared. I gazed at his photograph and saw there a blinding light enveloping my body and the entire room. My nausea and other uncontrollable symptoms disappeared. I was well. At once, I felt strong enough to bend over and touch mother's feet in appreciation of her immeasurable faith in her guru. 
Mother pressed her head repeatedly against the little picture. O omnipresent master, I thank thee that thy light hath healed my son. I realized that she too had witnessed the luminous blaze through which I had instantly recovered from a usually fatal disease. Where my light is, God once told a saint whom the divine light had healed, no darkness can dwell. The divine light, pure, calming, liberating, is the only final cure for every kind of delusion, ill health, emotional grief, and spiritual ignorance. Seek it daily in the silence, in deep meditation. As the Bhagavad Gita says in the fifth chapter, for whom that darkness of the soul is chased by light, splendid and clear shines manifest the truth, as if a sun of wisdom sprang to shed its beams of light. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Oh, oh. we been in that room, we may not have seen that light. The light that's being spoken of here in the scripture this morning is the light that is seen with spiritual sight. And this is what we have dedicated our lives of meditation to, to perceiving that light within our own selves, because it is our essence. And so we may have some experience of the light within. And eventually, of course, we will have experience of being able to see that light active in the world. But it is always active in the world. It is the quality of that light which brings the balm to all the issues that we tumble around with in this world. We sang the song this morning, we sang the chant, Nothing on Earth Can Hold Me. It's very appropriate to this topic. Swamiji mentions how interesting this word light is in the English language because it has two very different meanings. It's about the luminosity that we see in electricity and other things that bring forth the electromagnetic power but it also, light refers to weight, the comparative weight of things. And so lightness, this is good that we have this word, this wonderful English word that does so much, because that lightness of being is our clue to how we can move forward spiritually and become spiritually mature so that we may well have an experience of that light which healed young Mukunda. I've been rereading a book which I so much enjoy and have found that it's helpful to a lot of people, which is called Testimony of Light by Helen Greaves. And it's a very interesting book because it's, it's the writing, it's the, the sending of a message by uh, a lady who passed to the other world and she sends her messages of what's going on with her to her friend on this side. And they had been nuns, they had been nuns together and studied a lot of spirituality together. And they were convinced of life on the other side. And so she, the one who passed away, very joyfully began to send the messages about how she was getting on and what things were like. And she speaks of the death experience as letting go. She said, oh, it's simply letting go of a level of density. 
So once again, we have that wonderful understanding that we are beings of light, totally trapped in these extraordinarily physically demanding bodies, but it isn't who we are. We just need to convince ourselves of that. And so every Sunday we try to convince ourselves of that. <laughs> because it's the reality. If we can begin to live in that reality, then we will begin to experience ourselves from the perspective that God has of us. Yogananda said at one time, you have no idea how beautiful you are. You are all beings of light. Was he just saying something nice to his devotees? No, he was speaking about a reality because that light shines within and in meditation we can begin to get in touch with it and then in our life with others we can begin to share it because it is that light which, which blesses. You know, Swami mentioned, Swami Kriyananda, the founder of Ananda, mentioned one time that there was a young lady who came to the Ananda village. She was very interested in these teachings and she wanted to engage in them and make something of her life because her life was giving her so much trouble. And she stayed at the village engaging herself as much as she could for about nine months. And, and then she came to Swamiji and she said, Sir, I think I need to leave. And he said, well, I can see you are doing so well. Why do you think you need to leave? And she said, I'm beginning to forget about all my troubles, and I can't do that. <laughs> so we, we think we need to mix and mess it up with all our troubles, and we really don't. We just need to go for that light. And so we're, we're in a lot of confusion. There's a lot of things we need to untangle here. But the light is, is the way. That is, that is the direction. And, and lightness is the direction. Um, there's a sweet story comes from the Buddhist tradition. And I read it yesterday and I, I saw it in a different light. Um, it's the story of a monastery where there were some young Buddhist monks and they were under rigorous training and they had all agreed to this training, but you know how human nature is. You, you start disciplining down and a little part of yourself just wants to get out of there. So this one monk just decided he'd had enough of about two or three weeks of this rigorous training and he knew he wasn't supposed to go out but he climbed over the wall and jumped down and went out for an evening. Well, his superior found out that he had taken off. And so he gave him a couple of hours thinking that would kind of do it. And he went over on the place in the wall that was a likely place for skipping out. And he stood there. He became a human ladder. And so the young, the young fellow did come back. And he, he stepped down onto the shoulders of the head monk. He was petrified. He was just petrified at the scolding he was going to get. And the superior said to him, go along inside. It's chilly out here. You'll get cold. Now, that's ultimate love. That's ultimate understanding. That's lightness of being. That's seeing completely. The young man, he wanted to be dedicated. He was going to make a try at it. He was probably going to succeed. And he just took a little night out. So big deal. There was no need to come down heavy on him. Just keep it light. Keep affirming that lightness. It's such a sweet story. It's a wonderful story to remember. Now, of course, there are times when Yogananda would need to come thundering down on someone. But he, 
he was appropriate in his guidance, when he could see in the moment that someone needed a real scolding, he wasn't angry, he wasn't upset, he wasn't disappointed. He was just using the method that would get them to remember the light within. There is the story which we're all familiar with, but again, it it's, it's carries this theme so beautifully. It's the story of St. Francis. He had been brought back to Assisi when it was really clear that his life was about to end. It was interesting that it was really clear because he suffered a great deal, so he probably looked like he was ready to leave many, many times. And But finally, the time came. And yet, by this point in his life, he had been living in that inner light so completely. And at the end, the, the great joy came upon him. And so he lifted himself off of the litter on which they had brought him, and he stood, and he started singing well. His church brothers... Uh, thought it was horribly undignified that he should be singing as he was dying. This was, you know, this was not proper. See how heavy, heavy, heavy the rules. And so they came and just said, do you really think this is proper? And he, you know, he kind of gave it to him. He said, well, probably not, according to how you see it, but... I feel so much joy, I can't help singing. That lightness, that moving toward the light. Swami has written a lovely little book, which I think at times gets forgotten because it's a little book. (laughs) It's a little book and it gets hidden and he's written 144 books. And this little book is called The Land of Golden Sunshine, and we also have it in CD, and so that's a real treat because you get Swamiji reading it to you. And he says this book represents him in a very deep and significant way. And it's a story, it's like a fairy tale story. It's written in that kind of form of a young girl living in a heavy environment She's poverty-stricken. The town is poverty-stricken. She's all by herself. She's unhappy. She feels a longing for something. What might that be? And that longing is fulfilled because one day into her little room comes the sun man, this beautiful, brilliant being of light. And it's so interesting how Swamiji describes her first response. She's thrilled by the light. She can feel that quality which is like her. You know, I think that light is so completely who we are that we, we bond with it right away. And yet there's so many experiences that we've had that, that put up blocks to that. And so when she first meets him and he asks her if she'll just release her life into his hands, she turns away, she's so afraid, she says, I don't deserve it. We need to let go of those burdens and that's what we're doing. That's what a lifetime is about, that's what many lifetimes are about. Letting go, not adding to them, but letting go of those burdens that block the light. And. She feels like suddenly that she's made a terrible mistake to turn away, but she could almost not help herself. And she doesn't know whether she'll get a second chance. So there's a lot of wonderful drama in this. And yet he does come again. And she does release herself into that light. So our reading is from Metaphysical Meditations the 1932 version. Through the transparency of my deepest meditation, I will receive the light 
of the omnipresent Father fully passing through me, and I shall be a son of God, even as Jesus was, by receiving God fully through his sacred meditation expanded consciousness. Have a moment of silence. Now we'll have this opportunity to have an offering. Please take what you'd like to offer and place it in your right hand. Pray after me. Divine Mother, we offer to thee, we offer to thee the fruit of our labors. The fruit of our labors. Bless this offering. Bless this offering. That it serve as a channel of thy light. That it serve as a channel of thy light. To truth seekers everywhere. To truth seekers everywhere. Om, Om. peace.
We have several classes and events coming up in July. First of all, starting this Tuesday, July 1st, Rashmi Dave will teach a class at East West Bookshop in Seattle. And it's on health and vitality for everyone. And I believe she will uh, cover quite a bit of, about the energization exercises that are Paramahansa Yogananda's unique contribution to yoga. Uh, you can learn to um, uh, control your life force and energy in your body at will. So if you want more information on that class, uh, you can find it in the bulletin that you'll get on the way out or downstairs. And I'll be in the foyer after service and you can ask me questions too if you'd like. Then on Friday we have our annual 4th of July picnic at the Ananda Community in Linwood. Just a relaxed afternoon with friends. We will have a planned potluck, so if you'd like to come, you can sign up for a menu item to bring on the board downstairs. We also have, this next weekend, a family camp out on Whidbey Island. So if you'd like information on the family camp out, there's a form downstairs, has a registration form on the back. It's uh, the 4th, 5th, and 6th at a lovely group campground on Whidbey Island. And the next week, on Friday, July 11th, we will have an evening under the stars with Jyotish and Devi Novak, who are spiritual directors of Ananda Worldwide. And they don't, uh, aren't able to come up here very often, so you want to take advantage of this opportunity. We'll have a catered Indian banquet, again, at the Ananda community in Linwood. And you need to prepay your tickets, uh, which you can do today downstairs. And then on Sunday, the 13th, they will, Joe Tish and Davey will give Sunday service here. And then I believe that's it for now. <laughs> we'll now have the Festival of Light written by Swami Kriyananda. Let us lift up our hearts in a festival of light. The essence of this ceremony has been passed down from ancient times. O oh, waves that we are on the bosom of the infinite sea, joyfully together let us celebrate our own greater reality. For now by God's grace our redemption is at hand. The promise has been given. The divine light returning anew to earth has given us power as the Holy Bible proclaims to become the sons of God. Into our hands have been delivered the sacred keys of awakening. Abundant now is our hope. The Lord through the Bhagavad Gita promised, even the worst of sinners, by steadfast meditation on me, speedily comes to me. Again in that holy scripture he declared, even a little practice of this inward religion will free one from dire fears and colossal sufferings. And whereas suffering and sorrow in the past were the coin of man's redemption, for now the payment has been exchanged for calm acceptance and joy. Thus may we understand that pain is the fruit of self-love, whereas joy is the fruit of love for God. From sun and moon and all the stars, from glistening seas, high mountains, desert solitudes, and vast fruitful plains, and from the hearts of mankind and of creatures everywhere, goes up in wordless yearning a prayer for redemption. Please stand. O mighty source of all that is, O mighty source of all that is, from sorrow lead us to everlasting joy. From sorrow lead us to everlasting joy. From darkness, lead us to infinite light. From darkness, lead us to infinite light. From death, lead us to immortality. From death, lead us to immortality. Oh, oh. Peace. peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A fledgling bird once flew out into the world, gained strength and wisdom, its parents told it. And what you acquire, share with others, even as we have shared with you, for you are a part of all that is. Thus, Lord, we left you countless eons ago. Ours was a holy mission. You charge us to learn great lessons from life, to be fruitful in the gifts you had given us, to expand and multiply them. 
Alas, we abandoned our mission. Instead, we hoarded selfishly, nor did wisdom come to us when repeatedly we lost everything we had. For the young bird in flight for the first time gloried in its newfound strength. It began to think, how foolish I would be to share my strength with anyone. What else is wisdom if it is not to keep what is mine for myself? And so we, like that bird, entered upon the second stage of the soul's long journey away from its home in God, the stage which is called the revolt. That bird's brief day was like eons of our time. When afternoon came, it entered a storm cloud and soon found itself struggling for its life. Wind and rain lashed at its wings. The more it fought back, the weaker it became. Give yourself into my hands, cried the wind. To your strength I can then add my own. At last the little bird heeded this counsel. Then suddenly it found itself soaring high above the clouds. Hours passed and night fell. The little bird grew afraid. How it cried, can I fly in this darkness? And the night whispered, fear not, for lo, peace awaits you in the unknown. Surrender to me and your strength will be renewed. And after a time, the tiny rebel surrendered and found the night's counsel true. And rain and sky and grassy fields all sang, behold, your very strength to fly has never been your own. Look to the source of all power if you would conquer fear and weakness. And the bird asked, where can I find that source? And they answered, seek it in the farthest depths of being, in your own self. Thus gradually the bird entered that third stage of the journey, which is called the quest. We now, like that little bird, have come to realize that buffeting winds are life's way of giving us strength and courage, that even fear, like shadows on a statue, gives light and substance to hope. From the depths of unknowing, Lord, we cry out to thee, is there no lasting purpose to our lives? Behold, all that we thought was light was but darkness. Who are we in reality? For what end were we made? Ever and again, through your awakened sons, the answer comes. The forming of stars and moons and planets, of galaxies revolving on the tides of space, of drifting continents, upheaving mountains, snowy wastes and dark silent ocean deeps, had but this for its design, the birth of life, and with life's birth, the dawn of self-awareness, passage through dim corridors of waking consciousness to emerge at last into infinite light into perfect joy. O oh, children of light, forsake the darkness. Please stand. Know that forever you and he are one. Raise your hands and chanting om. Ask that the power of God replenish you in body, mind, and soul.
Please be seated. Such, O Lord, was your promise. Gaze upon this light as a symbol of God's love. A prayer of love went up from earth and you responded. A ray of your light flashed out from the heart of infinity, burst downward through night skies of consciousness, and was born on earth for the redemption of mankind in human form. Many times has that light descended, drawn to earth by the call of aspiring love. Your chosen people have always been those of every race and nation who with deep love chose thee. Please pray with me, O Lord, with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, and with all my strength. I choose thy love. I choose only thee. The infinite Christ consciousness, the only begotten, has come down anew to earth for the salvation of mankind. When we need you, Lord, our beloved, you descend. Our human griefs, your love alone can mend. By proud indifference, unaffected, though eternally rejected, you remain our friend. Jesus appeared to the great master, Babaji. The lights on the high altar of my church, he said, have been growing dim. Though still lit on lower altars of good works, the noble taper of inner communion with the Lord burns low and is ill attended. Let us together, united in Christ's love, set lights ablaze on that high altar once again. Thus a new ray of light was sent to earth to the great masters of this path. Greater can no love be than this, from a life of infinite joy and freedom in God, willingly to embrace limitation, pain, and death for the salvation of mankind. Such ever has been the sacrifice of the great masters for the world. Here then is the fourth and last stage of the soul's long journey through time and space, the redemption. Lord, we offer up the little light that is in us into thy blazing light of infinity. Grant us the grace to know thee and make us ever increasingly pure channels of thy love to all. Please stand. has come anew to earth through our line of gurus, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Sri Yateshwar, and Paramahansa Yogananda. This grace is eternally channeled to mankind 
by great masters in every religion. It has been given new clothing by our gurus to reflect man's dawning awareness that matter is only a manifestation of divine energy. In God, all are equal. Not only Jesus Christ, Lord Krishna, and the great saints everywhere, but even in essence, those on earth who have sinned most greatly. Joyfully lifting up our hearts in song, we pray that we who earnestly seek communion with your light receive it in our lives abundantly. those who feel so inclined to come up to the altar and receive the touch of light from the masters. As you approach, offer a prayer of gratitude to the infinite Christ in whose love our line of masters have descended that we might all come to God. Pray too for the grace to share with all as you have received for you are a part of all that is. May the light of Christ, the infinite consciousness, shine upon you.
And now let's stand and send out to all the world the blessings we have received. Krishna, Mahaji Krishna, Hari Mahashaya, Hari Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yateshwar, Swami Sri Yateshwar, Beloved Master, Beloved Master, Paramahansa Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, Saints of all religions, We humbly come to Thee, We humbly come to Thee, O Divine Mother, O Divine Mother, We offer to Thee all that we are, We offer to Thee all that we are, Expand our consciousness, Expand our consciousness. Lift us. Lift us. Flood us with thy light. Flood us with thy light. Help us to know. Help us to know. That we are children of the light. That we are children of the light. Amen. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Go out with joy. Joy, joy, joy. be in the foyer for the next few minutes to answer any questions you have about classes or events. And if you're new to Ananda, I'd like to give you a packet of information to take home. We do have a farm stand downstairs with produce that's just harvested this morning and lots of summer herbal products. And we have snacks downstairs, so please join us down there. <laughs>